Is Xenomorph really as good as people say? I decided to put this to the test in a competitive scrim match versus Team Night Owls, an established pro team with 30,000 hours in Dead by Daylight. We're going to play three games on Larry's, Wrecker's Yard, and Suffocation Pit. Without any more delay, let's just get straight into the games and see how these professionals can do against my Xenomorph. All right, in this game, I equipped Corrupt Pop. Mindbreaker or Fearmonger and Pain Res. The perks are pretty obvious, but Xenomorph has a very, very strong early game. As you can see here by me just getting straight across the map in like two seconds using the tunnels. And Mindbreaker as well gives me the opportunity to just kind of jump the survivors on gens. And this takes away them any chance of using the exhaustion perk to not give me that free hit. So we're just hoping that we can jump out on survivors as they come off a gen and get a free hit straight away. As well, I've been kind of developing this early game strategy in which I wouldn't take the first survivor that I come out on, and I would try and aim for a survivor that's closer into my active gens, which basically just restricts the area the survivor has to run because they never want to run into another survivor that's working a generator because that allows me to pressure two people at once, and it's just something that you never really want to do in comp. And right here, the level of respect that this survivor gave to the tail was ultimately their downfall, as well as the small height of the Xenomorph might have played a part here in them just losing track of me. But there you go, straight away having a really good first chase, and something you're going to see a lot in this video. Xeno absolutely thrives in chase potential. In general, Xeno is one of the best chase killers in the entire game, and we just got to see if we can get our macro on a level where we can keep up with that insane chase potential. So, so after popping that gen and regressing it by 30%, we're now looking around on the gens that they could have got progress on, as the gens on the top side of the map will have all been blocked with corrupt. And we're chasing again in this office area, which is a very strong palette for Larry's. And I thought that I could get this tail attack, but she actually managed to make it around the corner in time. So I thought my best decision here would just be to drop chase and just see if we could see anyone else rushing for the unhook. And then I go back to check again and we see Nancy just absolutely pile driving in for the save. And we get a nice quick down with the tail on the Nancy. And getting this hook is just going to regress their most progress gen by 25%. And we still have five whole generators up. As well as that, it's going to give me another pop, which is going to help me tank another gen down. So taking this trade is entirely beneficial for me and we're sticking with the theme of just checking around this area the four gens on this side still yet to pop a gen with two pain res stacks used and they're continuing the theme of the really fast unhook so as i come back we catch out yun jin and we start to take the chase we get a really nice tail attack even though she did try to crouch tech on the pallet and then we stick to her she turns the corner onto another pallet loop which is very very good for xeno's tail and we get a nice fast down taking another pain res getting the 25 percent off the most pro generator in the meantime they did manage to pop a gen and we're straight back into the tunnels trying to find another survivor Xeno's tracking obviously one of the best tracking in the game at this point being able to see anyone's footsteps on the map as you go underneath them is huge and we see ace's footsteps who's already been hooked he's playing this tile that's by the gate which is actually very very good for me Xeno is very very short when in runner mode so he can barely see me and on top of that, I can shoot over the entire loop. And then electing to play this pallet, which honestly is a better pallet versus Xenomorph. Although that's not hard because the pallet he was on before is probably one of the worst in the entire game. One tail attack missing and then we're getting the down. Straight back into the tunnels again, trying to find a new survivor. We see the footsteps in one of the stronger pallet rooms on Larry's. And the survivors get their second gen of the game, picking up the pace a lot more from the slow start that they had. And obviously she is just gonna chuck that straight away. Doesn't want to risk it at all. Again, using the crouch tech to make her hitbox a little bit smaller and just getting out of the way, making it so that I have to make a more precise shot over the pallet. And we miss. So we're going straight back to the hook to try and find either the unhooker or if we have to take chase with the ace because we can actually kill him really early providing he has no anti-tunnel. And that is exactly what happens. We catch the ace completely out of position and get a perfect free down to get a kill with three gens left. But of course, survivor efficiency is always going to be a little bit lower on Larry's because they have to be way more careful and specific on where I am to not give up free hits. And then you might be noticing a little bit of a theme here. It's starting to get into a bit of a pattern. Down hook, tunnel, down hook, tunnel, down hook, tunnel. And we find the Nancy, but again, she's taking chase in a really strong area for the survivors. So I elect not to commit to that. And we move on to the Adam, who's in a much, much worse position, taking the vault off of his gen. 
taking as much distance as possible, which is a smart move. You never want to stop and let the killer catch up to you. Especially when it's a killer as strong in chase as Xenomorph. Taking a hit on the first pallet, holding W as much as possible to the second pallet, but we reach another loop, which is very, very good for the Xenomorph. And in general, I do think from the amount of games that I've played that Larry's is one of the strongest Xenomorph maps. Partly because you can confuse the survivors where you are by using the tunnels to get around the map. But as well as this, the vast majority of the loops are very, very good for Xenomorph's tail. And then off of the hook, I'm trying to push out, find if they're doing any gens, but they rush the altruism so fast that it's just more beneficial for me to just 180 and take a new chase. And we see Yun Jin obviously going for the save straight away. Trying to dodge the preemptive tail attack by faking the pallet there. But I never actually went for it. I stayed patient and just got a regular M1 over the pallet. And she takes distance. We lose her. Or we just kind of elect to play our gens here. We do find a one that is 50%. So we want to keep our eyes on that for the rest of the game. And the survivors have actually got us down so that there's only two gens remaining. Playing actually... Much, much better with just three survivors on the map. And now we've got locked in this, in this weird position where the Nancy really has to respect the distance aspect of my tail. And by doing this, I don't actually have to commit to one side of the loop much at all. I could just fake one way a little bit. She has to make an early prediction on what I'm going to do. She decides to vault the pallet. And I just double back, so we got to completely free down without much effort at all. And we get into this pretty funny position with Adam, where I'm just waiting for my tail, because I can hit over about half the loop. But to be fair to the Adam, I get into my runner mode, and he actually plays it really, really well. And then I come back to this hook, and I'm thinking, oh, I just have to wait 10 seconds, they're body blocking me, and I can down the Nancy. Little did I know, this Yunjin has head-on, absolutely booms me. And then the Nancy just takes a vault into basement and just resets it all anyway and just, I mean, turns it into a 2v1 because she's Deathhook. Not a, not a bad trade for me, really. I get head on, but I get a kill. I mean, I'll take it. We use our pop on this gen just to get the gen progress down a little bit. But we are playing against two injured survivors in a 2v1. So I'm just kind of using the tunnels to get an idea of what all the gen positions are like. And eventually, as we're skirting around, I am I find out the progress of all the gens. I'm trying to have a look if they're actually resetting. And we do see the steps on this really strong pallet room again. We work our way around, and we do actually see the Yunjin vaulting into me again, respecting the distance that I can make with my tail. But for whatever reason, it doesn't connect. I think she managed to get out of the way just in time. And again, I'm just trying to use my fear monger to my advantage, and I'm just dropping Chase, going to the gen that I know the Adam will be working. And when I get there, he's already gone, pre-left it to be fair, his teammate would have told him on comms, hey, they've left me, get off the gen, because that's where he's going. And then I tried to pull here a little bit of a mind game, we're gonna go back into the tunnels, but I actually have no intention of going for the other survivor, even though that's what would make sense. And we come back around here to the other tunnel, which is in the direction the Adam left to last time. And we're going to try and catch him off guard. Or at least get a nice little chase in where he's exhausted. Can't use any potential exhaustion perks. And we do find the Adam. Obviously a little bit harder to, to hide when you're injured and screaming. And he goes to another pallet that's not the best in the world for the Xenomorph. But it's not bad at all. And if anyone could tell me how that tail attack missed, I have no idea. But he vaults the pallet. We whack him over the other side. It's kind of the story of Xenomorph at this point. And then we're back into this loop that the Nancy was playing earlier. The downed pallet and the window. But you do have to respect the fact that I can not only hit you from so far and hit you over the pallet. I can also hit you through this tiny little window. So I'm just trying to keep her here. Make it so that she can't get away and like potentially find Hatch when the Adam dies. But I think she notices what I'm doing. She uses a small little fake to get a little bit of distance away. And then we're playing an absolutely terrible pallet. A tail attack comes in, and that is the 4k with one gen left. Not a bad result at all. Okay, now on to Wrecker's Yard. Coming off of a pretty damn good result with the 4k one gen left. And as you can see, I've decided to switch out Fearmonger for Make Your Choice, just to see if I can get a little bit more value. Maybe we can get something, or it'll just slow down the survivor. Maybe they can't play as aggressive whilst they're exposed. Might incentivize them to rush altruism a little bit more as well before I can even get away. 
so that my maker choice isn't even proc. And annoyingly, the first survivor I find, they're in my active gens, but they're on one of the strongest loops in the game, being the bus power. I'm a little bit annoyed that I didn't use the height to my advantage there, because I think Ace very evidently, as I broke the pallet, could not see me over that rock. But it's okay, I'm not, not the end of the world. And we do actually end up getting a free hit. But as I hit the ace, I go into cooldown and the turret just snipes me out of my power. So we are doomed, banished back to the tunnels if we want to use our tail again. And that is exactly what we do. We get the jump on a survivor though. They're in a pretty bad position. They decide to run to the corner of the map just to waste as much time as possible. Which again, very common of comp players just maximizing the time that I am away from my gens as much as humanly possible. So we injure the Adam, putting him into Mangled with our add-ons as well, which is very, very good. It's going to take him a little bit longer to heal. So we've got two survivors, both hit with tail attacks. They're going to take longer to heal because of my add-ons. The two add-ons I'm running, I've just realized I've not actually mentioned it at all yet. One of them decreases the effectiveness of the turrets on me, and the other one just makes the survivors Mangled when I hit them with my tail. A nice little down on the loop there on the ace, and that will deliver us the first hook of the game. Using our pop on the Shack gen, one of their most progress gens, and we'll be dipping straight back into the tunnel again and trying to find the Adam. So what we do here is we go, we go to the exact same gen that we found the Adam last time, and I'm realizing that I'm probably a little bit too small to see over this uh, dumpster, I guess. I feel like that's an American word. So I'm trying to mind game it a little bit and we do actually manage to successfully mind game the Adam and get a nice little hook. So two hooks with four gens left is not bad at all. But like I say, I think Xenomorph is an absolute king of the early game. So you do need to be doing well in the early game with Xenomorph. And then it's the exact same again. The Shack Gen is one of the most important gens for the survivors on this map because it's the dead middle. It's very easy for the killer to control. But then there's also this upside for the survivors that it's a very good loop. And it always will be. You can never get rid of that vault. So it's a very interesting tile on the map. But I elect to leave Chase in favor of maybe hopefully finding someone who's injured. And we do actually find the ace in the corner here. The ace leaving the gen early knowing that I'm on my way. But not actually making enough distance. And electing to leave the tile was a really weird decision. And this is where my add-on has came in absolutely clutch because I have just tanked the turret completely and still managed to get my down. Like, yes, I lose my power, but there's going to be downtime where I can recover my power as I'm going to hook the ace anyway. And again, you might be seeing a little bit of repetition because I think it's happened so many times this game, but down, hook, pop the gen in shack, and then hop into a tunnel. And exact the same time as always, we're chasing the Nancy off shack. But this time I tried to do something a little bit different. You regain your power as you move around the tunnels. That's why I did the little wiggle left, right, left, right there. But I didn't actually ever move from that exit station. So I come straight out back on the Nancy. But to be fair to her, she's wise to it straight out the window again and makes it to a very strong tile with the pallet and the window. So I decide to leave again. We find the Adam where the ace was before working on the gen in the corner. And I'm kind of like, hang on a minute. I'm looking for the ace here because the ace is death hook. And getting a kill this early on would be huge for me. So I decide to go straight back into the tunnels. I'm actually going to go somewhere I've not been before on this gen on the hill. But as you can see, I do have some pretty tight gens. And the ace, again, just in a pretty bad position or just not the best loop to play against Xenomorph. Xeno is pretty consistent in like all of the range killers. You wouldn't want to play that loop against a Slinger. You wouldn't want to play that loop against a Huntress. So you're not going to want to play it against a Xeno when they're in runner mode. And... Ace caught out in a bad position. Then we see Nancy, who's probably putting herself in a more vulnerable position to give me something to go for so that they can pick up the ace and the ace can live longer. We do end up getting the hook on the Nancy, which gives us another pain res, and it makes it so that they're not fresh. So that in the tournament scoring system, it would be better for me if we were playing to those rules. But they do manage to pick up ace. The save on the Nancy procs my make your choice. We use the tunnels again to uh, completely throw off the survivor and just get to a weird position. And what do you know? It works perfectly. We catch the ace off guard. He goes to loop the tile. We're so small, he can't see us over the auto haven walls. We body block him on the pallet. He can't throw it. And then that's bye-bye Mr. Ace with one gen left. 
Although, you may see, we definitely do not have any kind of 3-gen for this endgame. And we're straight into the tunnels just because I have a pretty strong suspicion that they're going to be working on the gen over by the bus. And the killer instinct shows us the Adam. We enter into chase with the Adam, who's already been hooked. He's running one of the tiles that I'm actually very, very confident on with Xeno. Because it has that little lane with the pallet where it's very, very difficult to dodge a tail. But to their credit... No, I was completely unaware, and they were working the other gen and get it popped. An incredibly well played, incredibly well played for the survivors. Maybe I should have realized that that was the gen they were working on. I checked the wrong one. I go straight over to that gen just to try and secure a final kill, and we find the Nancy, who is right by a turret, and I'm just thinking, maybe I can tank the turret and shoot a tail through the pallet and get lucky, but that is not the case. And then here comes where the survivors play their absolute best in an end game like this. Tanking, communications, they've got to get this survivor out at all costs. And it goes into a position where I am not, I do not love being in. I'm in Xeno without my tail power. They've got a survivor body blocking for them. I'm just thinking I've got to manage to get a hit on this Nancy any way possible. Adam is running in front of me. Yunjin already took a hit. Nancy's trying her best to get back towards the gate. I'm trying to stall to get my power back. Nancy's finally got to the point where she's like, okay, I'm gonna hold W. I am two stacks of bloodlust, which makes me 125% movement speed. Nancy goes to the pallet. I can shoot over this entire thing. Crouches by it, hoping that I'd send out a quick tail attack and we get the down, giving us a 2K. And here we go into the third and final game on the suffocation pit. Again, that one perk switched out from make your choice to thrilling tremors which is a perk which I've been having a lot of success with when I've been doing a streak with uh, Xeno in pubs. And as you can see, the survivors starting this one very fast. They've got a turret on main already for the first chase. The ace looping me where he's confident, but eventually leaking a first hit. And then I'm kind of in two minds of how I want to play this. I do know that I'm chasing on the corrupt side right now, but I do actually decide to just commit to the ace. And he starts to take distance towards the middle of the map, which is interesting considering this is where my active gens are. But I was like, okay, fair enough. And he actually emotes there, which gives me the impression that he's intentionally going down on the pallet. But I'm thinking in the back of my head, maybe if it's a bluff and if I just insta-pick, they won't be here in time. But Nancy comes around the corner, shatters my hopes and dreams, slams me with the pallet, giving me nothing for first chase. Blinds me, and now we are absolutely fighting a losing battle on the suffocation pit. We see the Adam working this gen. I push him back towards main, rather than giving him free range to the other side of the map. Although, I don't think he would be that happy to run the other side of the map anyway, just because that's where all the active gens are. Miss our first tail attack through the pallet, but get a regular M1. He hugs main again, and I did see the Nancy out the corner of my eye, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I can push up and go for the Nancy. They have already healed the ace from the first chase mind. And I'm kind of seeing what their gem progression's at right now. I'm just in a very weird position. I'm definitely trailing. We see the Yun Jin in a bit of a dead zone. She just W keys straight towards Shaq. I get a nice little tail hit, pushing her into Mangled with the add-on, which will be a longer heal. She decides to pre-drop Shaq, and I decide to go straight back into my tunnels and see if I can catch someone off guard, maybe get a little less distance or a free hit. The survivors did actually tell me there's a way that they could tell when I was coming in and out of my tunnels because their screen would tear ever so slightly. And that's how they would know if I'm going in or out of my tunnel without even being able to see me, which is really interesting. I wonder how much that had an effect in the actual game. But the Adam looping this tile, this is a terrible tile against every killer, but Xenomorph in particular is just gonna absolutely thrive there. And we get our first down and onto a Scourge Hook. We see the ace and we get reminded of the high gem pressure that the survivors do have. I'm expecting probably another three gens to pop relatively soon. We take the chase with the ace and we follow the ace. He goes to the other side of the map. I decide to actually use my pop and get the minus 30% on that generator. And we see the scratches heading towards the hook. The survivors save. They pre-drop the pallet. I'm instantly thinking, yeah, probably for live and absolutely confirmed by the Adam. Lithing to the other side of the map so that the survivors can work the gens over by main building. And I'm thinking this tile actually 
is probably heaven for Xenomorph. A very good tile to play. No line of sight for the survivor. I don't need... As soon as I break down a tiny bit of distance between me and the survivor, I can hit them with my tail, and that's absolutely perfect. And that's exactly what happens. We down the atom, sling him on a hook, and we get another pop, but no pain res. And there's Nancy taking the distance from the gen straight away, taking advantage of the no fear monger. We go straight into the tunnel, because I want to throw off the survivor on where I actually am. We come out, and there just happens to be a turret there from earlier, which I have to break. Slows me down a little bit, but it's not going to be too, too impactful. And you see exactly where the Adam should be on the side of the map so that his teammates can work the gens on the top side. And I'm at the point where I don't have a lot to play for. I just kind of need to get my kill here. So I'm like, okay, whatever. We'll play Shaq. Get rid of the Shaq power as soon as possible. Adam pre-runs over to this filler in the corner. Loops it once. Goes for a little fake. Maybe try in the crouch attack. And we tail straight through the power for the down and the death hook on Adam. And now I'm really fighting an uphill battle, but I do see the one gen that they're working on with Thrilling Tremors, and we're just gonna go straight to it as fast as we possibly can. And into the tunnel, and there the gen goes. About what we expected, they had enough time to do all of those gens, so you know these survivors are gonna be as efficient as possible. We get the killer instinct on the ace, ace running the tile. Not a, a terrible tile for Xenomorph. The, the main problem here is that they can loop all the tiles together, and that just is the problem for the middle of Suffo Pit. And we go for a little mind game here, just because I was hoping the ace would respect the tail, and he vaults into me, which gives me a free hit. We put him to Mangled as well, so it's gonna take longer to heal. And then the Nancy again, using her Sprint Burst to pre-run to Shaq with the pallet already gone. Didn't manage to get a hit through that window. She finds another filler pallet. We've barely chased on this side of the map, so they have a lot of resources still up. I am thinking, though, I do need to get a tag quickly or at least get to the other gen. If I can tag all the survivors, then I'm more likely to be able to hold some pressure in the end game. But they are going to be working two gens on complete other side of the map. And whenever I'm chasing this Nancy, they're going to be doubled up on that gen, so I do have to be careful. We leave the gen maybe about 30% as we leave. And we find the gen the two survivors are working on. You can tell it's definitely two with that progression. Push them off. We get confirmed with the killer instinct. And getting absolutely boomed by two turrets at once. And Yun Jin, the final healthy survivor running the pallet gym. Ideally, I'd find the ace and then maybe be able to do something with pain res. That's what I'm thinking. We switch off Yun Jin, find the ace, push him to the top side so that the Yun Jin might not be able to work on that gen, but ace obviously knows that as well. Doesn't want to take me to that gen. Yun Jin, most likely, in my head, would be running to bottom side and getting on that gen with Nancy, but no, she has head on, which is actually used surprisingly a lot in comp, and buys the ace even more distance in the chase. Ace runs me into the turret that's already set up, slowing me down even more, and another turret, which I'm just shocked is even there, knocks me out of my power, and then I'm like, okay, hope and a dream. I'm hoping that he tries to get another loop on this pallet. We swing really early. We get our down, and I'm like, okay, Pain Res is gonna hit the gen, and then we can play out this end game with an injured survivor and a healthy survivor. As I hook the ace, they pop the gen, and I'm just like, oh, well, we were fighting a losing battle, but that is rough. Let's see if we can do anything. We did get a gate spawn, which was really good for us. And it was the injured Nancy which stayed on this side of the map. Which I think is a little bit of a questionable decision, especially when I have the ability to traverse the map so quickly. Maybe sending the injured survivor for save would be risky, but potentially a lot higher reward. And we get the hook in the basement, but I'm trying to play for as many stages and hooks as possible. And the smartest play for the survivors now would just be to pressure both gates at once, making me commit to one of them. And of course, they're seasoned, they have 30,000 hours, that's exactly what they do. We go for Ace, the one that I actually have an opportunity to get a down on. Down him in the corner, and I'm like, right. Well, maybe, maybe if we get a lucky cooldown, quick cooldown on a tail attack, we can get a 4k, but it's very, very unlikely. Obviously, she's going straight for the save. I pre-charge the tail round the corner, injuring her, which is pretty good, but the Nancy's got a body block, of course, so now I'm thinking, all right, 10 seconds of endurance, it's still there when she vaults the window, so I can't go for the hit. And the most annoyingly placed turret in the world knocks me out, and that is game 
over. A three escape for the survivors, but all with a very fine margin. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, maybe consider dropping a sub or a follow on Twitch. I've been streaming a lot over there recently. And if you enjoyed this video, I really think you would enjoy this one as well. It is when my nurse played against Hens's win streak team and it's in the exact same style of this video. Have a wonderful rest of your day.